The Bible said, let everything that have breath do what? Praise ye the Lord. So I want you to do me a favor. If your legs work, come on, let's just stand up as the praise team is getting ready. Amen. We come to glorify our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say amen for Lady Corbin. She come at this time. Come on and give God praise. Come on. It's another day's journey. We're glad about it. We have our health. We have our strength. Come on and give God praise in this house if you know he's worthy. Come on, lift your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Come on, we came to uplift the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on and give it to him. Give him your best praise. Come on. Come on. God has been good to us. He's been merciful. He's been kind. He's been a way out of no way. He's been a company keeper. He's been our healer. He's been El Shaddai. He's been Jehovah Jireh. He's been Jehovah Nisi. He's been Jehovah Shalom. He's been our all in all. He's been a way maker. He's been a protector. He's been a savior. He's been a way out of no way. Come on and give him glory. Just wave your hand. You thought I was worth keeping. You and change my life you thought I was worth keeping when you clean me up inside you thought I was to die for you came and changed my life so I could be free so I could be whole so I could tell Oh 
for your good He's intentional Never you say All things are working for our good GTV Nation He's intentional Woo! Never fail you say it all things are working for make it personal yeah he's intentional never fail you wave your hand and say all things are working for my good he's intentional to worry cause it's working for me it's working for me and the truth is working for you I don't have to worry I don't have to worry cause it's working I dare you to say it it's working for me and the truth is working for I don't have to worry no I don't have to worry cause it's working for me, hey, it's working for me. This is our walk why.
voice. Fight past the mask. Use your weapon. Somebody holler. There's a breaking in the spirit. Chains are being broken. Healing is taking place. Somebody shout in this house.
Somebody say, Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, work Holy Ghost, have your way. Any way you bless me. Let heaven hear your sound. I hear the sound of believers. I hear the sound of overcomers. I hear the sound of conquerors. Somebody shout out more than a conqueror. Come on. Come on. Chains are breaking. How about my shot? Deliverance. God, go to that hospital room. Abasha, the blood. And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor Say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Slip your hands up. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what? The Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Come on, you ought to tell it. I thank you, Lord. Oh, give thanks. That's what we're doing. could have been worse. Give thanks. There's such a sweet spirit in the room. The spirit of the Lord is here. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? That word liberty simply means there's freedom. I told you when we first started this morning, this is a safe place to praise. You in your safe place to worship. Come on in. Like and share GTV Nation. I know you're online and you felt the Holy Ghost. But there's a sweet spirit in this house. And I believe Jesus is here. Ask me why I know he's here. Because he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me. That I am his own. Somebody shout, you can make it. Come on, encourage your neighbor this morning. You can make it. I don't have a lot, first lady. That's all right. You can make it on what you have left. You can make it. Come on and give him praise. Woo. Come on and give him adoration. Can I just tell my testimony? COVID hit my house a couple of weeks ago. My daughter's well. Come on and wave your hands, Destiny. Just give God praise. Come on and wave your hands. Lord, I thank you. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord. There is a standard for the believers. 
We thank him today. Mother Thickpen, you're a survivor. Mother Williams, you're a survivor. How many survivors do we have in the house? Missionary Webb, years ago when you had that surgery, you're a survivor. I dare you to look over your own life. I can't tell your testimony, but I sure enough can tell mine. 25 years ago, I was giving birth to our oldest son. And I hemorrhaged so bad after having an emergency C-section that the doctor told my family it looks bleak. She's lost too much blood. But I had a praying mother. Oh, yeah. I had a praying father. I had a praying church family. Somebody said the prayers of the righteous. We give thanks to him. Come on. Think about your own testimony. Come on and give him glory this morning. We're standing all over the building. I have to stop right there because I tear this church up thinking about all the things he's brought me through. Somebody say there is a word. We're standing all over the building as a token of respect online. You know how we do. God bless. Come on, you really say it like you mean it. God bless. God use Pastor Colbert. Come on, let's give God some praise, everybody. Come on, let's give him some praise. Come on, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. Come on, come on, come on. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Come on, I thank God for saving me. Come on, where my praise is at? Those of you that are watching online, come on, where my praise is at? Come on, come on. I need some praises in here. Y'all told me that when praises go up, the blessings come down. But you know what? I beg to live when the praises go up, the blesser comes down. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said he inhabits, he indwells in the praises of his people. Hallelujah. We thank God today. You may be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Woo, the Holy Ghost came in this place. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. And those of you that are watching online, I know you felt it too. And we thank you for joining us today. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I, I made up my mind I'm going to rejoice, and I'm going to be glad in it. Amen. We pray and hope that you all are doing well in your soul and in your mind and your body and in your spirit. Oh, God, I feel like there's a praise. Hallelujah. It's about to break out in here. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, well, it's giving time. It's giving time. Amen. There are many ways to give. Come on. If you want to be blessed, pay your tithes and your offering. Amen. And so we want to welcome you to and challenge you to give on today. Amen. We come bearing gifts. Amen. As I always say, as my, my uh, uh, pastor and, and uh, my dad always said, it's not your birthday, it's Jesus' birthday. <laughs> So, amen. So, we come to worship him, and we come to give him glory. Is that right? Amen. So, why don't you give? Let's be a blessing today. Those of you that are watching online, it's on the screen. You can give online. You can also give on our P.O. box. Amen. Listen, I'm just so glad to be in the house of the Lord. It is Christmas weekend, the Sunday before Christmas, and I am glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'd rather be in the house of the Lord than any elaborate funeral home. Y'all would catch that on Tuesday. But I thank God. Amen. Come on, let's give Lady Colbert and this music ministry a hand. Amen. Last night we celebrated 
uh, our GTV honors, our second annual GTV honors, and we had a glorious time on last night. Well, now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back. That's all I want to say. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turn back. Luke, the 17th chapter, the A clause of the 15th verse, NASB version. May God be glorified. May the saints be edified. May the sinners be justified. And may the devil be horrified. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turn back. Will you just do me a favor and point at three people and tell them worship brought me back? Worship brought me back. I, I want to expose many of the untruths about worship and unbury many of the unknowns about worship. I've told you this before that worship is not just two slow songs and a fast one. That's not incorrect. That is worship, but it is incomplete. That worship is not just what you do, it's who you are. It's a lifestyle. As a matter of fact, it's not only what you give, that's worship, but it's what you give up. To every single person that is watching me who has given up on someone physically touching you because you love him more than you love him, <laughs> that's a form of worship. To every person that's speaking to people that hardly speak back. Just because Matthew chapter 6 said, love your enemies and bless them that curse you. That's a form of worship. To those of you that are hanging in a toxic marriage only because you love him. That's a form of worship. Those of you that are putting up with stuff that you normally wouldn't put up with. And walking away from stuff that you normally wouldn't walk away from. That's a form of worship of worship the most important thing about worship and i told you this last week that worship helps sustain your sanity I, I don't know who i'm talking to but just keep on living grandmama said and something will happen in your life and you're gonna be glad that you've been worshiping because see you didn't go looking for god you haven't spoken to him or hadn't been in his presence but now boom my daughter my husband my life, my money. Come by here, Lord. <laughs> Worship. Uh, Pastor, will it remove all the pain? No, but it will give you some peace. Can I get a witness up in here? I'm trying to explain to y'all the criticality of becoming a true worshiper. Not just showing up here once a week, but loving God way deeper than just coming here. Loving God every day. Tithing, giving, witnessing, public worship. If you do private worship enough, it's going to intensify our gathering like it did a few minutes ago. I can tell some of us have done some private worship. Matter of fact, you're going to walk up in here and you're going to feel God's presence. And let me go ahead and make an announcement today. Somebody is going to get healed on your road and online uh, without me ever laying hands on you because of the atmosphere is going to be charged with worship. That if enough of us thank him all day every day, you're going to fool around and walk up in here and get a glimpse of his glory and his glory is going to be on your road it's going to be online every person in here is going to be filled with the spirit because I need my neighbor to feel the glory I need people on my road to feel the glory because guess what y'all I can't shout at work because they're going to fire me my house is a trip I can't shout in the store they're going to arrest me but when I come to church I want to learn the Bible and I also want to feel the Bible. Is there anybody in here today came saying, Lord, show us your glory? I thought that a perfect text to talk about this subject would be Luke chapter 17 because look at verse 12 because it says, and he entered a village, 10 leprous men 
who stood at a distance met him and they raised their voice. They stood at a distance and raised their voices. That, that's, that's critical, guys, because leprosy, and I've told you this before, leprosy is a deadly disease. It was a deadly disease. Most people, um, without supernatural assistance, don't make it back from that. This is major, y'all, because leprosy, like life, is not always cute. Because leprosy would turn the skin white as snow. Leprosy made it itchy and you were not permitted to be close to anybody. It was contagious by the... T Don't that sound familiar? So we're told to stay away from the city. You were told if you had leprosy to go in quarantine. Go into a place where only lepers were to chill. Pastor, why are you telling us this because I'm telling you this because you've been listening so long and let's keep it real you always thought about these lepers as some guys off the street talking about got a little change sir got a little change no it's deeper than that these brothers got a death sentence it's almost like having full blown AIDS imagine being a dark skinned brother but you are fully white from head to toe it's like snow it's all over your head it's all over your face it's all over your body it's scaly it's scabby and you gonna die and it's over and I'm trying to get you to feel these brothers because this is no game they are dead and it's just a matter of time there is no cure there is no medical people that can help you it's over but Jesus came by I, I just missed that uh, he came by it would have been over this was a last chance I don't know y'all but maybe God sent me to preach this because you have no idea who is sitting on your row who is watching online and today this is their last chance as a matter of fact they and their spouse have already discussed it that we on our last we're filing for divorce on Monday I can't take it no more so let's just go to church pastor better say something because if he don't say something the toxicity of this marriage this mess you don't pull I cannot forgive you you're not meeting my needs you can't get nothing done I don't know I'm married to you nothing is happening nothing has been accomplished everything in me wants me to leave you this may be your last chance or some single person that's watching me saying I'm busting a move Monday because this is not working it's gonna get worse for me than it did when I was out there kicking it in the streets I'm going back to what I used to do somebody is online saying I'm gonna blow my head off unless pastor say something that's gonna keep me alive be careful how you look at your neighbor because you don't know they might be on their last chance these brothers are on the outskirts of the city screaming Woo. and the text says in verse 13 that they lifted up their voice and raised their voice and said master Woo. have mercy Woo. I feel like having some church have mercy on us they, they scream master have mercy on us they raised their voices they raised their voice. Y'all just missed that. They raised their voices. I was taught good manners by my grandmama. <laughs> Baby, don't holler at foe. Ladies were taught, never raise your voice. That's not polite. Even if your husband is acting dumb, don't raise your voice. <laughs> oh, but there comes a time of the thick pen when you are desperate for a miracle. The Bible says that they are on the outskirts of the city and they are supposed to stay away from everybody. 
they're not supposed to say anything because even their personhood has not been recognized. Y'all pray for me because this text is pregnant with possibilities. They are on the outskirts. They are supposed, watch this, to stay away from everybody but they kept on screaming, <laughs> Jesus. They kept on screaming, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, have mercy on us. Why are they raising their voice? Why are they raising their voices, mother? Because sometimes in order to get what you need, you got to raise your voice. <laughs> Can I suggest to y'all that the text says in verse 13 that they raise their voices Pastor, why are those ten brothers screaming at Jesus? Because they have no access to health care. And not only that, they have no resources. They have nothing to hold on to. They have no connect to Jesus. They don't have anybody who can get in front of them. If they come out, uh, they're going to be arrested or put to death. They don't know what to do. So you know what? You know why they scream? Because all they had was a holler. I feel like having some church. I said all they had was a holler. Do me a favor and just point at somebody for the second time and tell them you don't know me like that go ahead come on say please don't criticize me because I walked in here this morning and all I have is a holler that's why I don't bother nobody for getting loud at church I don't bother nobody when they want to shout and want to get loud because you don't know who she's married to or want to be married to or used to be married to who she raised you don't know what that brother is dealing with what his wife did what his baby mama is doing and how she's playing games with his children how he got financial issues when people come to church this is a place to express worship and praise and sometimes I got to holler sometimes I got to scream sometimes I ain't got no money I ain't got no love life I ain't got no credit I ain't got no car but the one thing y'all ain't taking from me up in here is my holler I know you got a cute little husband and you got a nice job and a good house I ain't got all that but I bet I got a holler Woo! is there anybody in here may not have what your neighbor have but when you think about the goodness of Jesus woo! oh y'all gonna make me jump off this stage I wish I had somebody in here that would just lift up your voice like a trumpet as loud as you can and say God if I can't give you nothing else I'll give you the sacrifice of praise where my screamers at I said where my screamers at somebody holler in here hallelujah and can I tell you what I love about Christ, because anybody else would have been concentrating on the crowd. But my Christ is always meddling on the march. Preach, Colbert, I think I will. I feel like doing it this Sunday. He's always dealing with the marginal lies. He's always dealing with those what others say, I ain't got time for them. Uh, look at these brothers. These brothers are on the outskirt. Mr. Mr. Jesus. Mr. Jesus. Mr. Jesus. I'm about to die. Some of y'all are like, why are they making all this noise? Because he's all they got. If, if, if he don't help them, it's over, mother. 
if, if Jesus don't intervene in this situation, it ain't going to happen. Some of y'all are in that place right now. If God don't get in this, it's over. You don't try psychology. You don't try Facebook. You don't try social media and counseling on the internet. You don't talk to everybody. You don't talk to your mama and now Jesus. And can I tell you what I love about him? As opposed to concentrating on the crowd, you do know his disciples are saying, Jesus, we have to stick to the itinerary. We have to be in Galilee by three. We got a photo shoot in Samaria. We have to get going. Go on and hug these few people, Jesus, but, but please, in order to keep us on schedule and to keep you on schedule, Jesus, we have to go. Please ignore these guys. No one touches them. Nobody fool with them. We, we got to go, Jesus. Why? Don't, don't fool with them. Who is them anyway? He, he walks. Mother, he walks over to where they are. God, I feel like preaching. What's up, gentlemen? We need you. We are dead without you. Watch this. He said, all right, go show yourself to the priest. Wait, somebody, somebody just missed it. Why did Jesus say, Go show yourself to the priest. Because he's still under the law. Grace has not kicked in yet. And the law said if you had leprosy, if you got supernaturally healed somehow, you had to go to the high priest who would check you from head to toe the priest will look at you from head to toe and say, you know what? I declare that you are healed. Go back and enter into society. So why did he say, why did Jesus say, go show yourself to the priest? Because now Christ is the high priest. Y'all know, know that, don't you? He, he, he could have said, Jesus could have said, you ain't got to show yourself to the priest. You ain't got to show yourself to nobody. I got you. Mm -hmm. You you cool. But but no, he said, watch this. Jesus said, who are you under authority with? Honor that authority and go show yourself. I'm God. And I'm telling you, even though I'm God, in order to fulfill the law, go show yourself. I got to go, y'all. Because I want to ask you a question. When do you show yourself to the priest? After you've been healed. Y'all missed that. When do you show yourself to the priest? After you've been healed. But there's only one problem, Webb. They ain't healed yet. Whew. The problem with the text is that they still have leprosy, but Jesus says, go show yourself. Can you imagine them walking? And talking, <laughs> now what is he talking about? Go show yourself to the priest. What? How come he didn't say abracadabra? Should have bought a Honda. How is he just going to tell us, even if we are healed, when we get to the temple, they're not going to let us in. Matter of fact, when we get to near the city, they're going to stop us. So why would he tell us to go before he heal us? Can I ask you all a question? Has God ever asked you to do something that don't make sense? But one of them says, watch this, Sister Hunter. What do we got to lose? 
I feel like preaching up in here. One of them said we might as well walk in obedience because what we have is not working anyway. We might as well trust God. Has God ever asked you to speak to somebody that you want to tell off with everything that's in you? Has God ever asked you to hang in there with somebody that you never wanted to talk to again? Has God ever asked you married people stay another year with you got every ground to leave has God ever asked you to do something I don't know who I'm preaching to that right now life don't make sense but just point at your neighbor and say I'm just walking in obedience go ahead come on say stuff is not happening perfect in my life I'm still struggling with some stuff I've been absent for five years I don't have nobody to call my man I don't have nobody to call my woman but I'm just walking in obedience I I don't have no money in my pocket but I'm still paying my tithes and my direct TV bills are behind. I don't have nothing. I'm in a pandemic but I'm just walking and I don't know who what God is doing but he told me to trust him when I can't trace him and this sounds stupid to me but I'm just going to walk and follow the last orders given and just walk by faith and not by sight I'm just walking I'm just walking don't have nothing don't understand it but God just told me to trust him I'm in a pandemic lost my job money ain't coming like it is I'm just walking I'm just walking God says, still give. But I'm just walking. They just, watch this. They just went to walking, mother. I wish I had somebody that God got you on a journey right now. That you have no idea what you're walking into. You have no idea what you're walking for. You have no idea what's getting ready to happen next. All you know is that he told you by faith. He said walk by faith and not by sight. And I want to know is there anybody in here that is walking by faith in this pandemic in 2020? You don't know how it's going to end but you just walking. I just dare somebody just to stand on your feet and just begin to walk in place and just tell your neighbor I don't know what God is about to do but I'm just walking I'm just walking by faith they went to walking can you imagine and they are walking and, and I wonder with everything in me Because I'm just biblically nosy. I want to know how long they've been walking. How long long did they they walk? Can you imagine walking and not understanding what you're walking for? (laughs) Knowing that you cannot even get in the temple with this white, crusty, scaly, leprosy, skin, and yet all ten of them brothers walking. But the next verse says, and try not to run around the church, but they were healed on their way. Somebody's about to tear up this church. They were healed on the way. Some of y'all haven't shouted yet, so I'm going to say it one more time. They were healed on the way. Let me try it one more time for those that are watching online. They were healed on the way. Y'all miss it, so let's see who's going to catch it in here. Listen carefully. They were healed on the way. Okay, watch this. Here's y'all shout. Your deliverance is on the way. Okay, you missed your shout. You're shouting, 
but you missed it. I'm going to say it again. Your deliverance is on the way. You know, you know what, Brother Duran? It's a shame to shout and you don't know what you're shouting about. Let me try it again. Your deliverance is on the way. You, you think you're hearing me, but you ain't really hearing me. You, ain't, you thought you caught it, but you ain't caught it yet. Because you thought I said your deliverance is on the way to you. That's not what I said. Let me try it again. Your deliverance is on the way. Listen, y'all. I am not one of these television preachers that you watch on TV. I'm different. I'm trained. I'm biblically astute. I'm not giving you this pie in the sky. Send me $50 and I'll send you a red handkerchief and your miracle is on the way to you while you sitting on couch eating some potato chips and texting. That's not what I said. I said, you thought I said that your deliverance is on the way to you. That's not what I said. I didn't say your deliverance is on the way to you. I said your deliverance is on the way. Your deliverance is not just coming to you while you just passively sitting down doing nothing. But God said that when you head down the way, God said when he when you head down the way, when you speak to that person that's been hurting your heart for 12 years, when you stop letting him touch you until he marries you, when you say, I love a woman who's not loving me back, God said, when you start walking, your deliverance is on. Would you do me a favor and point at five people and say, I'm on the way, I'm on the way. But the, your deliverance I wish I had somebody here that's catching a little hell right now. I wish I had somebody that's watching me online that's catching a little hell right now. But God sent you to church. Do me a favor. Point at three people and tell them your deliverance is on the way. Yes. 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 I know it's rough right now. But I got a word for somebody. What you've been waiting on is on the way. Now you can sit in your seat or you can stand up and tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you've been waiting on. Tell him it's on the way. You've been waiting a long time. But I got a feeling that in 2021 that something is turning around in your life. The Bible says that as they are walking, they were healed. I bet somebody that's crazy enough to just walk in place and say, neighbor, I believe that if we walk in place, by the time we get back to our seats, if we walk by faith, there's something about to happen. Yes. They just started walking. And the Bible said that the more they walk, something start happening. Would you tell your neighbor something is getting ready to happen? The Bible said that the more they walked, they looked at their hands and their hand looked new the more they walked they looked at their feet and they did too but they kept on walking and healing came up from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet and all of a sudden the leprosy was gone will you tell your neighbor say neighbor it's almost over you're waiting long enough it's almost over you're healed your healing is on the way your deliverance is on the way Come on, 
line and just tell three people it's on the way, it's on the way. Watch this. And when they got healed, the tenth brother said, you know, I just got healed. I'm about to go to my woman's house. The ninth brother said, I can't believe I'm healed. I'm about to hit the club. The eighth brother said, I'm healed. I get to kiss my daughter. The seventh brother said, I'm healed. I'm going to the Cliff Club tonight. The sixth brother said, I'm healed. I'm going to my woman's house for show tonight. The fifth brother said, I'm healed. I'm going to get me some steak and lobster. Because I have been three years since I was able to go to a restaurant. The fourth brother said, I'm healed. I'm going to my grandmama's house. Because she always been good to me. The second brother said, I'm healed. I'm going to pick my son up from my baby mama's house. But this brother said, one of them, where he saw that he got healed the bible said i'll catch up with y'all later but i gotta go back and say lord thank you thank you jesus worship brought me back i gotta go back somebody stop them and say why are you going back because he said worship brought me back and is there anybody in here that came to church in this pandemic would you tell somebody I could have went to the park I could have went to the mall I could have went over my mama's house I could have went to the neighbor's house but why did you come today would you point at your neighbor look him dead in the face and say neighbor why did you come back now look back at him and tell him worship Woo! brought me back worship brought me back i could have stayed home but worship Woo! brought me back daughter had COVID but the Lord healed her I could have stayed home and said virtual Sunday but I couldn't stay home when I found out that my daughter was healed I had to go back and say thank you I tell you what I feel a praise about to happen, but I hear the Spirit say, take about 30 seconds and give God a praise and just tell him thank you for everything he's done for you. Go ahead. One, two, three, go. Come on and praise him. Open up your mouth. On a Sunday morning, open up your mouth.
Come on, begin to open your mouth and say, if the Lord don't do anything else for me, he's already done enough. Go ahead. Get your deliverance. in this place hallelujah I just believe there's more than two or three of us that are gathered here today I believe there's enough power in here that if you just begin to just point at three people and tell them your healing and your deliverance is on the way come on just do that your healing your deliverance is on the way now receive it right now Worship, worship will bring you back. You hear what I said? Worship will bring you back. What I'm trying to get you to understand that worship is not just what you do. Worship is who you are. It's a lifestyle. I just don't worship when things are well. But I worship even in the bad times. And if you will ever learn to be a true worshiper, Jesus said, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Will pastor will worship cure everything? No. But it gives them peace. Even in the midst, in the midst of COVID, Ooh. in the midst of COVID, I will worship. Mm. Devil, you think you're going to stop me? Worship is real. I ain't got nothing but my worship. That's why David said, whatever you do, Lord, please don't take your spirit away from me. Take my house. Take my car. But don't take it. That's all I have. Some of you, that's all you have. All you have is just what these ten lepers had. All you had was a holler. All you can say is, Jesus, have mercy on me. And the devil has been trying to shut your mouth. He said, this way, watch what he said. Watch this. I put a mask on their face. And it's going to stop them from. But I wonder, do I have anybody with some mask on that say, I'm not going to let this mask stop my worship because my worship is for real. Y'all ain't saying nothing.
as the praise team is coming, as the praise team coming, I want you right now, right where you are, even in your seat, I just want you to begin to give God a worship. Come on, I want you to get your mind. Because of you, my cloudy day are gone. Come on, come on. I will sing to you this song. Come on, what my worshipers? I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Worship him, worship him. Just want to love Come on and take that worship to another level. Just want to serve you. Come on and tell him, tell him, tell him. Just want to praise you. And when this one found out he was healed. Just want to thank you. When you found out you've been delivered.
right where you are. I feel the presence of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And as you're standing there, giving him worship, as you take your worship right now to another level, God said, I'm healing you. Oh, you might say, well, I don't feel the healing yet. I don't feel the delivery. But as they went, as God tell you to lift your hands and begin to worship me, healing is in your body. I speak that over your life. I speak it over your family life. I speak it over your children's life. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I just want to know, is there anybody in here just want to tell them thank you? Come on, come on, right there. Come on, come on. I, 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 I hear the sound of intercession right now. I, I hear the sounds of worship right now. Woo, hallelujah. Father, right now as we are in this mode of worship, we come to tell you, Lord, our worship to you is for real. We came back today this Sunday before Christmas to say thank you as we're just a few days away from another year many have gone many of us have lost loved ones but God we still say thank you we bless you so God right now God I I speak over every person's life, every person that is watching. Lord, give them strength right now. Give them strength for the days to come. Whatever journey that you have them on right now, some of them don't even understand it, just like these lepers didn't understand it. God, I pray that they will walk by faith and not by sight. And as they're walking in obedience, God, I pray that, God, that you honor their obedience and turn that situation around. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you praise. And let the people of God say amen. Come on, clap those hands and shout hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands and shout hallelujah. Somebody ought to say, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Listen, for those of you that are watching online, call that number. If you need to be connected to a church, if you want to be saved, call that number. Somebody will call you back in 24 hours. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in this Wednesday night, Wednesday night in the Word for Christmas word this week we love you in jesus name god bye hallelujah well saints